All right, so here we are in a brand new scene and we are going to build our couch uh, using sort of a, more of a classical modeling approach and then we're going to proceduralize it later. So let's make sure we're all on the same page. I'm going to make sure I'm on the build layout, which I am, so that's good. And then I'm going to actually just make my background dark, totally optional. So I'm going to hit the D key and then go to background and switch it to dark mode just to make things a little bit easier to see for the recording. Uh, so let's... Let's start on a box. Over here in my network view, I'm going to hit tab and type box and hit enter twice and we got a box there. Let's dive inside this box network and start shaping this out. So I think what I'll do is I want this couch to be, you know, a double wide. And so what I'll do is make it maybe its size in X be two and we'll leave it a size of one meter in the um, Z axis, but then let's make it a little bit thinner. So I'm just going to middle mouse click on the uh, Y parameter and start scaling it down until it looks about right. I'd say a value of about 0.2 looks right to me. So we'll just leave it right there at a value of 0.2. Now what I want to do is add some loop cuts that I can extrude and I'll, I'll create the arms and the back of the couch. So over here in the uh, viewport, I'm going to hit tab and say loop. So here it's, you see I get this option to create an edge loop. So I'm going to click that. You can see what it does is it creates a poly split over here in my network editor. And as long as I don't click anything, you can see that once I move my mouse over my geometry here, I can get this indication that we're getting a loop cut that we can insert. So I'm going to pull this off a reasonable distance from the edge and click. And you can see that I've added a loop, uh, edge loop to my geometry for my, well for, let's see, yeah, that would be the left arm of the couch. And then I'm going to do it again over here. So we're just going to hit tab and say uh, loop. So we're going to do edge loop again and hit enter and slide over here. And we'll just do it kind of similar distance from this side. We're just kind of eyeballing it and putting in a loop cut there. And then for the back, we just want to do a similar uh, loop cut on this edge here. So hit tab again, say edge loop. And I'm going to just kind of put it right here. Cool. So we've got these, you can see what it's done now. We haven't really, we didn't actually lay these nodes down in the uh, network editor, but it's kind of done some work in the network editor for us. You can see we can go back to our original box and we're adding split one, two, and three like so, and they're all appearing uh, in our geometry like so. All right. So next let's extrude the um, arms in the back to uh, get our box here looking a little bit more like a couch. So I'm going to go into primitive selection mode. I'm going to select this cursor over here and then I just want to make sure that my primitive selection mode is selected from the top of this menu. We've got point, edge, and primitive and we just want this. Um, it looks like a diamond, almost like a baseball diamond maybe. And we can go on our, our screen and kind of click anywhere and that kind of will just deselect what we currently have going on. And then we hover over here you can see we get this pre-selection highlight. Let's just select this left arm by clicking on it and then I'm going to hold down shift and click this corner, the back, this other corner and the right, and then this right hand side of the arm. You can see that we've got a nice selection there uh, like so. And if you accidentally select maybe too many, like for, for instance, if you accidentally selected the back face, you can just come over here and control click on that. That will remove it from your selection group that you have going on. So now uh, that we have this with our mouse over the scene view, let's hit the tab key and type in poly extrude. And you can see that this little red line shows up and I can just grab that and drag this up and you can see that that is creating sort of that extrusion of our geometry. Now over here it has created a poly extrude node and you can see that distance is being controlled by this parameter as well. So you can kind of that adjust that here. There's other parameters you can mess with like the inset and such. We're just going to leave the inset at normal. So I'm just going to control middle mouse click that to set it back to default. And you can also see up here, there's this thing called the group. And the group is actually telling us what primitives we selected that we want to be actually extruding. Um, so if we go back to poly split three and actually turn on primitive numbers, you can see that if we select poly extrude, you can see poly extrude is going to be extruding groups 16 through 18. So you can see that 16, 17, and 18. That's right here, group 16 through 18. And then groups 20 through 21, 20 and 21. So these, this group is corresponding to which primitive numbers we had selected in the previous step. Now, if we wanted to modify this after the fact, like say we wanted to extrude this face as well, we can hit this little button to modify what that group selection is. So if I hit this button, you can see that this becomes purple and then it goes in 
puts the display flag on the previous frame. So here what I can do is actually go and modify this selection. Say, let's shift select primitive number two here and then hit enter. And you can see that it has added primitive two to this group field up here and had it become extruded along its normal as well. We don't want that, so I'm just going to remove two from this group field and hit enter. And you can see that we're just back to extruding what we wanted to extrude in the first place, which is just the sides and the back. Now, I want to make the back a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is actually go over here and let's go into selection mode. So I'm going to hit the S key to go back to selection mode and I'm going to click away and then just click this top primitive right here on the back of the couch. And then I'm going to do another poly extrude. Let's hit the tab key, type in poly extrude and hit enter. And then I can just pull this up a little bit more like so. So that's kind of looking like a couch. Now this is a little bit angular at the moment, so I'm going to actually add a bevel to our geometry. Let's go over here in the network editor and I'm going to hit tab and type bevel, poly bevel, and that will actually add a bevel to all of our geometry and it's not going to worry about the group. See how this group field now is empty on the poly bevel? It doesn't really care. We're just going to be beveling everything. So every edge is going to get this bevel. So it's like increase that um, offsetting distance and you can kind of see that it's adding that bevel to all of those hard edges that we had before. I'm just going to up the divisions to two just to make it a little bit more round around those edges. And then you can see here in the middle, we've got some, we've got a bevel that's occurring here. It's adding divisions to something that's already kind of planar. So we can actually restrict where the beveling is occurring by dropping down this exclusions uh, section right here in the parameters view and say ignore flat edges and, and stuff like that and coplanar incident polygons. What it does is it actually won't bevel these um, edges where the uh, faces are really close to being planar with one another. And you can adjust the threshold of that. Um, like so, but I'm just going to leave it at default for now. And I'm going to just turn off primitive numbers right now because that's getting a little bit distracting. But you can see here that we're, we've got the start of what might be a nice base for our couch. So the next thing I want to do is actually create some cushions. So in my network view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the side and I'm going to just um, hit tab and throw down another box. So we're just going to kind of block out what a cushion might be for our uh, chair here. Um, I might switch to the four view for this. So up here in the upper right hand corner, this big white square, I'm just going to click on that and select four views um, from the drop down. You can see that we kind of get the top view, the front view and, and a side view. And we can use this to kind of position where we want our cushion to go. So I'm going to bring the back in a little bit like so. And let's just bring it over to let's just bring it over to the left a little bit. So it's kind of in line with this left arm of the couch. And then I might bring the middle in a little bit as well. So like kind of make it so that this cushion is like half the couch width. And then I'll bring the bottom edge up and the top edge down to something like, like this. And I think that, uh, let's see. Yeah, it looks like it's, I'm just going to bring this in from the back a little bit so that it's in there like so cool. And then, um, I want to be able to see both of these at the same time. So I'm actually going to merge them together. So let's hit tab and type merge over here in the network view. I'm just going to click that merge and bring the two together. So we can see we've got our one cushion right here and the rest of our couch uh, right there. But uh, let's make this cushion look a little bit cushionier, cushier. Uh, I'm going to throw it on a subdivide. And it's just going to drop that subdivide right after the box node. And let's just take a look at it. Let's set the display flag here and let's increase the subdivision depth. So we've added one subdivision and it's smoothing it out quite a bit. Um, I'm going to add three subdivisions. So we've got a lot of extra polygons here. Um, but what we can do is actually override this crease weight attribute. And this is going to like override how much it's trying to smooth out that subdivision. So I'm overriding this crease weight. I'm just going to increase it a little bit so it gets kind of a cushiony uh, look to it. It's just, it's mostly rectangular, but it's a little bit, you know, rounded off, but not too angular, not too squishy, just sort of right in between. Uh, looks like a value of two is pretty good for our purposes here. Now, if I go back to the merge, you can see that this is starting to look good. Uh, we just need another one over here. So what I'm going to do is actually throw down a transform and just move a copy of this cushion over to the right. So if I pull this cushion off to the right, roughly around there, throw down a merge, and then I just wire this subdivide into the merge and the transform into the merge. 
you can kind of see that I've got these two cushions uh, right next to each other. And, you know, I can kind of eyeball this and, you know, bring it off to the side. Um, make sure that those look um, like they're not like intersecting each other or anything. And then down here where our couch is, we, instead of merging in the one subdivide, we just merge in the other merge. So I'm just moving that wire down here and you can see those are kind of both appearing like so. I'm just going to switch back to the single view so you can kind of see our couch and that's looking pretty good. Now what we can do is actually just take these cushions and repurpose them for the back. So we'll have back cushions as well. I'm going to um, just pop over here and we're going to use another transform merge combo over here. So let's run a transform and we're going to just template the poly bevel over here and put our display flag on uh, this transform right here. Actually, what we'll do is we'll template this merge right here and now we've got our transform uh, selected. We can start to rotate this. You can see it's kind of weird because we're rotating it about the origin. So if you look, the rotation isn't really on the uh, cushions itself. It's not really centered. So we can actually modify the pivot of these cushions uh, really easily by hitting the insert key. So I'm going to hit the insert key and I'm going to just kind of take a view at the front of it and kind of move this up. And that's going to actually just sort of put the rotation in the middle of this square. I'm going to actually just bring it a little bit forward as well. So you can kind of see that I've, I've somewhat centered my rotation um, pivot here in the center of these cushions. And then if I hit insert again, now when I rotate, we can see I'm really just kind of rotating it about the middle of these cushions. So if I hold on the control key, it's going to start rounding this to 45 degree angles. But since I didn't start at zero, it's not going to work. So I'm just going to hit, it's going to zero out the X rotation and hold down the control key and rotate it. And it looks like I rotated it 90 degrees. I could have just typed in 90 degrees, but just figured I'd show that you can uh, hold down the control key to snap to 45 degree angles like that. And now I'm going to move it in the YZ plane over here by the back of the uh, couch and let's just scale it in a little bit. Let's hit the E key and that will allow me to kind of scale these cushions down like so. And if I kind of merge these all together now, I'm going to take this, um, well, I got to merge these two together. So I got to merge the back cushions and the, and the bottom cushions together. So let's throw it on another merge here and we'll merge these together. And then here we'll merge those together. So you can kind of see, We've got the we've got or we've got the bottom cushions, we've got the back cushions, and those are all kind of coming together like so. I think I'll maybe just um, grab this transform and maybe middle mouse drag the back up a little bit so it's a little bit better um, positioned on top of these back cushions. All right, and so the next thing I think the couch needs is a um, some feet. So let's uh, create some uh, legs. I'm gonna go over here to this side over here, and let's create a tube. So we're gonna start off with a tube. And we're going to size this so that it is the uh, feet for our couch. So I'm going to actually set my display flag over here to the tube. Maybe I'll have the template flag on the uh, final merge geo just so I can kind of reference the size. But um, what I can do is take this tube and let's just make the overall height of it much smaller. Um, something like let's do 0.1. So it's a height of 0.1 and then it's radius. What I can do is I'm going to, I'm middle mousing on this parameter and that's going to adjust both of these radius fields is at the same time. And I'm just going to bring that down to something like 0.03. And then if we kind of zoom in, I'm going to turn off this template flag right there um, on this, on that merge and really just select our tube. If we bring this in, you can actually see that we can, we can change the radius of the top and the bottom independently. So if I grab this second one over here, I can uh, just kind of drag it in a little bit and let's make the bottom uh, value of uh, let's say 0.02. So we've got just this little taper on our little uh, on the feet of our couch. And let's also add end caps. That's going to fill in the end caps like so. And now we need to sort of position them uh, with the rest of our couch. So our couch is here um, and this thing is in the middle. Now what we could do is we could translate it into each of the corners or we could do something somewhat procedural which would be like taking the bottom face of our box. I'm just going to turn off this template flag. We could take the bottom face of this box and actually copy the legs onto each of the corners of this box. So let's kind of look at how we can do that. I'm going to throw down a blast node. So let's hit tab over here in the network uh, view and type down blast, which will just allow us to delete um, some geometry. So 
If I wire the box into this blast and highlight the blast, you can see that there's nothing there. But if we go to this groups uh, field, we can actually use this little selector like we were looking at before. So let's just tap that real quick. And here you can see we can select this bottom face. As long as you're in primitive selection mode, you can see we can select the bottom face like so, and then hit enter. And you can see that that updates our group field here. But instead of uh, deleting group three, we can delete everything but group three by saying delete non-selected. So with this box ticked, you can see that I get um, just that bottom, that bottom face is showing up now. So now what I could do is actually copy this foot geometry into each one of these points. So if I show point view, you can see we've got four points for each of the corners of this primitive. Um, now what I can do is uh, throw it on a copy to points. So I'm hitting the tab key over in the network view and typing in copy to points and just wiring that in here. Now on the left hand, uh, we've got the geometry to copy. So we want to copy the tube. In the right hand, we want the target points to copy to, which is going to be these points from this bottom face. And if I highlight that, you can see we've got our legs transformed to all those points. Now they're not facing the right direction and that's because of the fact that this is trying to copy this based off of the normal orientation that the box has. Um, in our case, we can just ignore that by going to the copy to points and unticking this uh, transform using target point orientation. So you can see that the feet wind up pointing straight up. And so what we can do now is actually just merge these with the original couch that we have. So let's bring the legs into the left and the rest of the couch into the right and highlight them. And you can see that the feet aren't quite in the same in the right position. They're not really on the floor. And honestly, the couch isn't really on the floor either. So we can go and uh, fix that. Also, the, the legs are kind of like not they're kind of sticking out a little bit so we can adjust that as well. Let's first um, get our feet onto the ground. So let's just uh, put the display flag on our copy to points and I'm going to switch back into the four views. And you can see here from our front view that they're a little bit below the ground. So let's throw it on a transform. It's going to throw this transform after the copy to points and I'm going to um, put my display flag there and just drag them up, drag these legs up so that they look like they're resting on the floor like that. So that's looking pretty good. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is highlight our, our merge here and then I want to set my couch so that it is on top of the legs. So I'm going to need another transform after this merge that is handling all this other couch geo that is in our legs. So throw in a transform here. And I'm just going to um, drag the node on top and just click and it'll wire it through for you. So now with a display flag on this merge at the bottom, I'm going to select this transform here so that my handle appears and just drag the couch up so that it's resting on top of those feet. The next thing I can do is apply another transform before we copy up here. So I'm hitting the tab key, typing transform and wiring that in right there, just dropping that in on that node. And now if this merge displayed below, if I go and select this transform and hit the E key, I can uh, scale these in on both axes and it's not going to affect the shape of our geometry. You can see that those um, legs maintain like their perfect um, tube shape. So if I switch back to our single view, you can see here that we've got what looks like a nice couch. It's pretty cool, it's a good start. But um, this is where you start to run into the situation where you're wishing for something more because you'd think, you know, you'd, what you'd want in a nice procedural setup is to be able to make the legs a little bit longer and have the rest of the couch follow along. And you can kind of see in this example, we're a little bit stuck. We just made this, the legs a little bit longer, um, but then we have to go over here and grab our other transform and bring the couch up and set it back on top of the legs again if we want to be adjusting the height of our legs. So it's sort of a manual process at this point to make any updates to our model. But what we want to do is actually be able to make these updates procedurally and have everything. We want to be able to change the size of the legs and have it follow along. We want to be able to stretch the couch out and have it switch from a single chair to a two cushion couch to a three uh, seater couch and stuff like that. So what we're going to do in the next section is actually build a procedural version of this setup so that we can actually have our couch be a very flexible little thing that we can we can easily change and have it update procedurally.